Good morning, this is Faith of Faith and Books. Um, I'm recording this on a Tuesday morning, but I'm not going to put it up till later in the week, I don't know when. Um, just because we're getting a house guest uh, who's going to be staying in the study, it's my youngest daughter's boyfriend is coming down uh, to visit. Um, and so, I mean, we've been quarantining and being very cautious and um, so we decided to, to let him come visit. Um, he's out of state. So anyway, so he's going to be here in the study and so I'm not going to feel so comfortable making a recording. So I'm going to do it this morning. Um, and I thought I would talk about, because uh, I finished the Elizabeth Gaskell collection of short stories. And I don't want to step on anyone's toes and I know that there's a read-along going on out there of a particular collection of her short stories and that is um, Kate Howe is, is hosting that. So I'm not going to do any spoilers in case some of these stories are, um, you know, overlap. This is a different collection, so I don't know what stories overlap with that, with the particular um, collection that they're reading, uh, which I think is called, is entitled uh, Cousin Phyllis. Um, and I did read two stories, Cousin Phyllis and um, uh, the poor Claire outside of the particular collection that I'm, um, I also read a, a book called the, which was entitled The Gray Woman and other uh, short stories by Elizabeth Gaskell. So anyway, I'm just gonna talk about what I like about Elizabeth Gaskell and what I find are her strengths and her weaknesses as I found in, in this collection of short stories. So I really like Elizabeth Gaskell. I've read pretty much everything she's written. I might be a novel shy, one of her, uh, one of her novels I might not have gotten to. But um, anyway, but I'd never delved into her short stories before. So this was a really fun um, discovery. Um, the, um, she writes well, she writes, I mean, some of these stories are better than other stories. Uh, Cousin Phyllis was well written and it was a real exploration from this uh, one uh, man's particular point of view, a young man who is um, starting out on his career and how he gets to know his, uh, I think she was his second cousin, Cousin Phyllis, and how his uh, befriending and involvement in their family eventually affected them. And he does something that in retrospect, he realizes wasn't the wisest thing to do that brings on, um, you know, real tragedy. So I like the way she developed. I noticed in her pattern of story writing, she develops this, in the, she does two different types of stories. She does sort of a gothic kind of suspense, or maybe not gothic, but more like romance kind of, where you have this feeling that something's gonna happen, that some, some tragedy is going to happen and you can feel that tension building. Um, and she does that in Cousin Phyllis. I, I felt like it didn't quite deliver what she was promising, <laughs> um, um, but it was, it was kind of a nice psychological study of what was going on with, with all the different characters. So it was more character driven, I guess, um, than plot driven. So I thought the plot was a little bit weak. Um, in the poor Claire, I really, it's my cat. Can you hear that? It's my cat scratching at the door because he's being a cat and he just wants to go in and out. Anyway, I'm going to ignore him. Um, in the poor Claire, I, it was more gothic. It had like really spooky elements to it and a real mystery. And I felt like she delivered better there. It was just, it got really strange, but in a really good way. And I found that. I found the poor Claire really um, satisfying. And I know I'm always talking about Catholic things, but um, Elizabeth Gaskell, when she portrays Catholic, she does it kind of like uh, George Eliot. She does it in a way that doesn't reveal she had any ax to grind, or there's, it doesn't feel anti-Catholic or like the, it's biased. It feels like she really could get into the head and, uh, um, you know, of, of people who didn't share her, her faith as opposed to you know, the Brontes or something who, who you can, you know, there's a real bias right away uh, that you can notice. 
So anyway, I really appreciate that ability of hers. And then I, uh, on the in the collection entitled The Gray Women, Woman that I um, was reading on my Kindle here for free. Let me see if I can go to the table of contents. And the, so the story, The Gray Woman itself was a really good story. I really enjoyed that one a lot. It had that building of tension um, and that, um, really focused on a particular character. Um, so that was interesting. And I like the way they're, a lot of them are set in Europe, like in kind of slightly, you know, exotic, I mean, I guess Europe isn't considered exotic, but it's not in England. It's people traveling to these other countries and in these little villages and interacting with the people there. And it just, it, it adds a sort of um, layer of exoticism to the story somehow. Um, I don't remember the story, Curious If True. I just don't remember that one. Six Weeks at Heppenheim, that was, that was a good story too. And again, the plot didn't quite... There was a lot of tension building, and then at the end, the plot didn't quite deliver what was promised. So it was this, it was kind of a mix of, of developing this tension and at the same time studying the characters of um, these people at this inn in Heppenheim. It was a good story though, I enjoyed that one. Libby Marsh's Three Eras. So this is the other type of story that she seems to have in this collection, which is more of a sort of morality tale, talking about people caught up in certain circumstances and how um, through their decision to be good, to be Christian, to be to make certain, to live by certain principles that even through their hardship, they, they sort of persevere and they actually come out the better for it. So for sticking to their principles, even though um, they're enduring a lot of sorrow and hardship. And Libby Marsh's Three Eras was that type of story. Um, Christmas Storms and Sunshine. That's another one I don't really remember, hand and heart. Bessie's Troubles at Home. Oh yeah, Bessie's Troubles at Home was interesting because it was almost like a children's morality tale. Bessie is, I think, 14 or 15, and she's left in charge of the home um, while her mother has to go, her mother's been sick and her mother has to go somewhere to recuperate. And, um, and so it's about, Bessie learning about her own character and and uh, but it's very much um, very much about her becoming a woman and learning how to keep house properly. That was another thing I really enjoyed about these stories is you get a glimpse into just the really homey aspects of life and how they had to prepare meals or how you would uh, just all the sort of little details about um, life at that time and how they how they did basic things in the home um, and then the last one I want to mention was called disappearances and it's weird that it's in this because it doesn't really seem to be a short story it seems to be an essay and it's so ironic is that the word for it but it's an essay about how um, how grateful she is that they we that society's come up with this idea of police because people used to just disappear and nobody would know what had happened to them and now we have police that will investigate this and it's so much better now and and that's what it's about and she recounts all these different stories of people who disappeared and nobody knew what happened to them um except maybe years later they would find out something um, and that that's why police were formed, the detective police, she called them, um, to keep an eye on things so people, so people know what's going on and they, can, and they can find out, you know, whether their spouse has died or, or that sort of thing. Um, and so I just think, I just found that really interesting that uh, in this time of, you know, where you hear people saying abolish the police, that I just happened to read an essay by a woman, you know, written back in the mid 1800s. It was talking about this new idea of having the police as such a great thing for society. That was interesting. So I really enjoyed Elizabeth Gaskell. She 
she can, you know, some stories were written better than others. Sometimes the suspense that she built didn't quite deliver in the plot. Um, but it was a really interesting glimpse into the life and the psychology of that time. And so, and she writes just really well and the characters are really interesting and you connect with them right away. So, so that's my little review of Elizabeth Gaskell's short stories and I will put this up at some point during the week um, and I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.